Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're on the geometric problems involved in the vectors chapter. So, a nice simple one here to start with and the whole time that we go through this we're going to look at how we can use fractions to help us get from one position to another. So in this question that we have here in the diagram the points A and B uh, have vectors A and B respectively. The point P divides AB in the ratio 1 to 2 find the position vector of P. Well, first of all, let's uh, label our diagram. So O to A is the vector little a, O to B is the vector little b. And what we have here to get from uh, A to B is we go back along A and along B. So that's negative A add B. So from A to B, um, the vector is A minus B. Okay, now we have to include this little bit of information about the ratio in the vectors here. So the ratio from A to P is 1, and the ratio from P to B is 2. So uh, a good place to start is what, write down what we want to find out. We want to find the position for P. So the vector from O to P is what we want to find out in terms of A and B. So what we want to do here to get to P there's no direct route to get to P, so what we're going to do is go to A first, and then from A down to P, and that will get us from O to P, and we add these two red line vectors together. So, the length from O to A is just the vector A, and then we have to go one third along the distance from A to B, because we're in a ratio of 1 and a 2, so it's a third of this distance along here to here. So let's substitute what we know then. <clears throat> so we know the vector from O to A, that's the vector A. So that's this part here, being uh, this part here. And then it's a third of the vector from A to B. And A to B is this part here, a B minus A. It's a third of this. So what we now just do is expand your brackets, group your fractions together, and we get O to P is 2 thirds A plus a third B. OK, so a classic geometric vectors questions here. Um, OK, yeah. Right, OK, so another little question here to do with uh, geometric problem solving. Uh, a triangle ABC where the vector from A to B is 3i minus 2j and the vector from A to C is i minus 5j. Uh, find the angle of BAC in degrees. So the first thing I do here is draw yourself a rough sketch. We go 3 to the right and 2 down. And then for the second vector here, we go 1 across and 5 down. So this is what our vector looks like. And we want to find this angle in here, and that's BAC. This is what we're looking for here. Now, what we can think about doing here is uh, use all of those geometric approaches that we've got for trigonometry, Pythagoras, etc, etc. So this is how we're going to want to get around it. What we're going to first look for is this uh, vector from B to C here. So if we know that to get from B to C you have to go back along this vector and down this vector, then to get from B to C, what you're simply going to do is... Um, do the vector of um, a to b uh, as a negative because you want to go back along that line and then down a to c and you want to do the positive of that because you want to go down that line. And simplify what you get here, you get ac minus ab, um, so you get minus 2 minus 3j. Okay, so effectively now what we've got is all of the vectors for each of the three sides. How is that going to help us work out the angle here? Well, remember back to the cosine rule. The cosine rule was handy in that if we had the lengths of all three sides, then we would be able to work out an angle by just rearranging the cosine rule. Working out the moduluses on all of these uh, vectors, we get here square root 26, square root 13, and square root 13. So now what we're going to do is apply the cosine rule. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Substitute all of those values in, and a lot of the stuff will cancel because it's all being squared and square rooted. And rearrange your formula. 
And in fact here, quite handily, we get A equals the 45 degree angle. Okay, so what you need to do is find all of the vectors on each of the sides, find the moduluses of all of these lines, and then just apply the cosine rule. Um, was there a faster way of doing it? Well, we can test out Pythagoras' theorem. As soon as we worked out these lengths here, I could have quickly spotted that 13 plus 13 gave me 26. So, just applying a little bit of uh, Pythagoras' theorem here shows us that we have a right-angled triangle here. And then we can just uh, use the fact that we have an isosceles triangle here uh, to get 45 degrees on those angles. So there probably was a little bit of a quicker way of doing it, but in general, you can use the cosine rule to find an angle if you know three of the sides. Okay. Right, another little question here involving the uh, topic of vectors. So OABC is a parallelogram. P is the point where OB and AC intersect. The vectors AC are represented with an OA and OC respectively. Prove that the diagonals bisect each other. So this is what we're talking about here. We have a parallelogram OABC and the diagonals here are from O to B and from A to C and they bisect each, they intersect each other at the moment. And We want to prove that they are bisecting each other. So in other words this line here is half of this full line. So effectively P is the midpoint between A, O, B and the midpoint between A, C. Okay. So what we're going to try and do to work this out is we're going to try and get from O to P in a couple of different ways by a few other different routes. Okay. So one way of getting from O to P is to start at start with OB, the vector from O to B, which is A plus C, and then do half of it. Or we're not sure if it's half yet, so lambda here is what we're going to use to represent our fraction. <clears throat> and if lambda comes out to be a half, then we know that we've got um, we've got halfway along our line to get to the midpoint here. So lambda here is representing a fraction of the vector from A to A plus C. Okay, so this is one way of getting from O to P. Now another way of getting from O to P is to go to A first and then go back or some fraction of the way along this line from A to C here. So we need <coughs> A to C first. Now to get from A to C, you're going to need to go along C and then back along A. So A to C here is C minus A. And we want to go some fraction along the, um, along the vector of A to C. And here we have a lambda, sorry, a mu, sorry, representing the fraction that we're going to go along this line here to get from A to P. Okay, so now we have uh, another way of getting from O to P. So if we want to get from O to P, we have to go along A first and then back down along this fraction of the vector from A to C. So what we've constructed between this part here and this part here is two different ways of getting from O to P. Now, these different ways from getting from O to P here should equal each other. So given that these are both vectors from O to P, they must be the same vector. So what we can say here is lambda A plus C equals A plus mu C minus A. So multiplying out the brackets, okay, and doing a bit of factorising, what we can do now is we've got, um, we've got an equation where we've got lambdas A and lambda C on one side, and 1 minus mu a and mu c on the other side. Now what we must have here is the a parts in both of the equations must match up with each other and the c parts of these vectors must add up, must uh, combine and uh, be equal to each other. So what we've got here are effectively two simultaneous equations lambda equals 1 minus mu and lambda equals mu. 
So just rearranging this formula here, and we get lambda equals 0 0.5. And so is mu. Mu is also 0 0.5. So what that means is that the vector from O to B, if we take a fraction of that vector where the fraction is 0 0.5, we get the vector from O to P. So this is where lambda equals 0 0.5. Okay, so that was quite a difficult one. What we'll do now is we'll have a bit of practice on this question here, see how far you can get, and then we'll go through the answer together. Right, so pause the video. Right, okay then, well done for having a go at that. So let's uh, let's have a go at this now. So the point O to A uh, is represented with a vector A, and the point O to B is represented with a vector little b. Uh, the point M divides O A in the ratio 2 to 1, so that's effectively... 2 over 3 and 1 over 3. Uh, Mn is parallel to OB. So M to N, if this is parallel, then effectively it's going to be some fraction of the B vector if they're parallel. Okay, express the vector O to N in terms of A and B. So what I'm going to do, very similar to the question we just saw before, is I'm going to find two different ways of getting from O to N, seeing as there's no straight shortcut. Um, the first way I'm going to get from O to N is to go up to A first, and then come down the vector from A to B, but just some fraction of the vector from A to B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this up into a ratio of, uh, let's call the, the other bit mu. So this length here is mu as a fraction out of uh, this part here. So uh, the vector from O to N is going to equal the vector from O to A, which is just A. And then it's going to be some fraction of the vector from A to B. Now, how do we get from A to B? That's go back along A and then along B. So that's going to be B minus A. So just doing a bit of simplifying and collecting terms here, the A component is going to be 1 minus mu lots of A, and then it's going to be mu lots of B. Okay, so that's one way of getting from O to N. The second way of getting from O to N is to go up to M, so to go from O up to M, and then from M along to N. And we know that this is going to be parallel to the B vector. So here, uh, what we get is the vector from O to M is 2 thirds A. And then it's going to be add uh, a lambda, a fraction of the B vector, lambda B. And given that these are both two different ways of getting from O to N, then therefore these two different ways of getting from O to N must be equal. Now just looking at the A components on both of these two vectors, 1 minus mu here is equal to 2 thirds. So therefore mu in this case must be a third. And then looking at the B components of both of these vectors, uh, mu must equal lambda, in which case here we find that lambda equals one third. So uh, express the vector from O to N in terms of A and B. The final answer for part A here is going to be two thirds A add one third B. Okay, part B for this question here is going to be show that the vector from A to N in the ratio from N to B is equal to one to two. So um, we've done there a lot of the work for this previously. So given that, given that lambda equals so mu equals a third, then a to n in the ratio of n to b will equal one part to two parts. Okay, so that's all we need to write for that because we've done a lot of the legwork for this already. 
Right, okay, another question here involving fractions and uh, finding two different ways to get from O to P this time. Um, see how far you can get with this question. Right, okay, let's have a go at this then. So if O to A is the vector A and the vector from O to C is little c, express O to P in terms of A and B. So what we need to do is go to P in two different ways. The first way I think I'm going to try and get from O to P is to go through M. So O to M plus M to P. So we're told here that uh, M is the midpoint between A and O. So that's cut in half there. And Q is along one quarter of the way from B to C, so that's three quarters. So let's break up this vector then. How do we get from O to M? Well, that's just a half of A. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to use fractions to represent uh, getting from M to Q. So it's lambda times from M to Q, where lambda here is our fraction. So this here is going to be a half A plus a fraction of how we get from M to Q. Now how do we get from M to Q? Well the only way I can think is to go up at half an A along a whole C and then back down a quarter of an A. So in total there I've gone up a quarter of an A, half and then take away in a quarter over there and I've also gone along a C vector as well. So adding these two together here, I'm going to get a half plus a quarter a lambda, lots on the A, and then I'm going to get a lambda C on the C vector. Okay, how else could I have gone from O to P? Well, another way of getting from O to P here is to go through A. So O to A first, and then I'm going to go some fraction down the line from A to C. So some fraction of the line from A to C so that I get to P. Now how do I get from O to A? Well that's just an A vector and I'm then going some fraction of the vector from A to C. And How do I get from A to C? Well that's go back along A and along C. So it's C minus A. So how do I simplify these together? Well expand the brackets and you get 1 minus mu uh, of a, and then we get add lambda lots on the c. And if both of these vectors get us from o to p, then they must be the same. So on the a components, 1 half add a quarter lambda must equal 1 minus mu. And on the c vector, lambda must equal mu. So that's a bit easier. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to substitute in lambda for mu into the second, into the first formula. So a half plus a quarter lambda equals one minus lambda. So what I'll do is I'll add a lambda onto the other side. So five over four lambda over here, and then I'll take away my half onto the other side over here. So times in three by four and dividing by five, I get lambda in this case here is two fifths. And mu in this case here is also going to be two fifths because they're equal. Right, so what is the question? Express O to P in terms of A and B. So my final answer here, O to P is going to equal one minus mu, which will be three fifths A, add mu C, which is going to therefore be two fifths C. Okay, there we are. So that's the answer to question four from exercise 11e. Have a go at the rest of the questions from this chapter. I know they're quite difficult, but do persevere through them and do ask your teacher for, if you need any help with them. Great. Thanks very much for watching.